understand we walk by faith and not by sight. We go through life not worrying about what people can do to us, for greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. We come with shouts of praises and hallelujahs and thanksgiving. Because God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just stay. Stay in the storm. It was dark uh, on every hand, uh, and we cannot uh, understand uh, all the ways that God would lead us uh, to that blessed promised land. That something sung today, something ministered today will edify somebody's walk with you, God. to God. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Good morning. And I Good declare morning. happy Mother's Day to all of those special ladies who helped form and shaped our lives. We would not be who we are or where we are had not we had some praying mothers. Amen. I know my Amen. mother had to pray for me when I was acting a fool and right. doing those things I had no business doing, but my mother prayed for me, yeah. had me on her mind, took the time to pray for me. And today I'm so glad she prayed. And we praise God for the faithful mothers who have blessed our lives, grandmothers who have blessed our lives and brought us to this day in our lives. This is a good day. 
and the young people are here to show us just how good it is. Amen. Our worship leader today is the local president of the YPD here at St. James, Sister Lamia Cross. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For thy day my course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Those who be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in the house of the Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwell. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. All together. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Let the Lord go forth to the Lord. All the earth and sing your praises. Our opening hymn this morning, hymn number 430, Faith of Our Mothers Living Still in Cradle Song and Bedtime Prayer. In nursery lore and fireside love, thy presence still pervades the air. Faith of our mother's living faith, we will be true to thee till death. All four stanzas, hymn number 430, Faith of Our Mothers. Faith of our situations of people that are on our minds today. Now, if your name's not on the list, that does not mean we're not praying for you. We're praying for everyone who stands in the need of prayer. Not my brother, nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. As we 
approach the throne of grace this morning, we lift up and we pray for all mothers, grandmothers, and aunties, and we thank God for their witness. We pray for the rights of all women and their right to choose. We pray for equal and fair justice within our judicial system. We pray against all gun violence and killings in our community, and we pray for peace in our streets. We pray for legislation that will deter gun violence and the sale of high-powered weapons. We continue to pray for all of our students, teachers, and administrators as they end another year of school. Lift up Mayor Ed Ganey, Congresswoman Summer Lee, Lieutenant Governor Austin Davis, and we lift up our Supreme Court. Lift up the mothers of the church, Mother Alma Burgess, Mother Annie Mae Davis, Mother Vivian Davis, Reverend Re Maureen Cross Bolden, lift up Mother Eva Lowe, Mother Frances Jackson, Deaconess Zerna Benton, Mother Gloria Daly, Mother Essie Jones, Mother Yvonne Peaks, Mother Dorothy Gregory, yes, yes, Mother yes. Susie Crumbles, Mother Della Burt, Mother Ada Anderson, and Mother Ruth Washington. Lift up our church members, Andy Coleman, Dr. Sylvia Wade, Judy Lewis, Licentia Monica Jackson, Larry and Rosie Moore, Jean Davis Watkins, Carl Lane and family, Robin Griffin, Dr. Lawrence Davis, Aaron Harrison, the son of Sister Stephanie Drake, DeAdrian James Harris, Paul Harper, Sarah Tompkins, Sierra Turner, Francine Dokes, Deborah Tillman, Daniel Simons, Kaylin Ford, Yvette Worthy, Lift Up Angel Peaks, Channing Buford, the son of Sister Monica Wallace, Catherine Parent Patterson, excuse me, yeah, yeah. Larry Fisher, Teresa Davis, Brandon Wade, Sheila Turner, Darren West, James Moore, Carly Harper. Kevin Ford, Robert Simpson, Barbara Lyles, Pat Rouse, Andy Ford, Moretta Brock, Alisa Hakeem, Dwayne Turner Jr., Janet Irvin, uh, Gloria Dorsett, Beverly Deans, Brendan Younger, Rhonda Anderson, Eddie Poole, Sarah Huddleston, Thomas Connor, Michael Fisher, and James Fisher. And we're asking for special prayers for Milton Nixon, yeah. the parents of the Reverend John Cofield, yeah. and for the brother of our presiding prelate, Bishop Earl McLeod. And last but not least, we lift up our online prayer requests. Elsa Griffin and Son, Phyllis Bettison, Derek Silve, Kunta Harrison family, Crystal Vines, Anna Williams, Ron Smith, and Viola Cleo Bradshaw. Let us pray. We're going to be led in prayer this morning by Lamar Cross Johnson and Nate Watson. I asked Nate, you okay praying? He said, not really. I said, just stand with Lamar. All right. So today, this is Paul and Silas. That's right. All right. They stand representing us in prayer. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. And God, I just want to thank you for making everybody who who's ever here. I just want to thank you for having having them be able to come here as we pray right now. Lord, I thank you for. I pray for my family, my mother, my grandmother, my great grandmother, all the mothers and grandmothers in the pews right now. I pray for all the mothers online as as we're here right now in the church. Pray for the schools, pray for the president, pray for all the different countries, and please pray against all gun violence and keep our streets clean and safe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Scripture read by Gianna Cross Patterson, followed by our Decalogue by Tristan Cross Johnson.
First John chapter 4 through 1, 1 through 6. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Test the spirits to see if they belong to God. Many false prophets have gone out, out into the world. Amen. Here is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit agree, agreeing that Jesus Christ Christian Christ came in a human body, belongs to God, but every spirit that doesn't agree with this does not belong to God. You have heard that the spirit of the great enemy of Christ is coming. Even now, it is already in the world. Dear children, you belong to God. You have not accepted that teachings of the false prophets that that's because because the one who is in, in in you is powerful he is more powerful than the one the one is in the world false prophets belong to the world so they speak from the world's point of view and the world's listen to the we belong to god and those who know god listens to us but those who don't belong to God don't listen to us. That's how we can tell the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of lies. From all, from all that dwells. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On, on these two commandments hang all law and the prophets. Amen. Glory.
by Bianca Morris, followed by our pastor's announcements. Good morning, church. First, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the special ladies who nurture us and help shape us into the people that we now are. We love you. And my first announcement today is that next Sunday at our 10.45 a.m. worship service, it's Women's Day, and our guest preacher will be Reverend Natoya Thomas-Smith. All women are asked for a Women's Day contribution of $150, and the men are asked to support the ladies with a $75 offering. And this year, the color is pastel. Also, the fourth Sunday this month, May 28th, will be our annual Lay Witness Sunday, and the guest speaker will be Mr. Tim Stevens, so please come out and support our lay organization. My last announcement is directed to the young people. We need your names and promotion information for our Youth Recognition Sunday, which will be held on Sunday, June 11th. Please contact the church office with your information, and if we have any graduating seniors from high school or college, we need your information also. Please have your information in by Sunday, June 4th. And also, it's giving time. So you can give in the gold plates that are stationed around the sanctuary, by mail, Givelify, and the St. James app. Um, thank you very much. That's all. Amen. Amen. I just want to take a moment and congratulate baby girl. Uh, she got accepted into nursing school, and in August, she begins that journey to become a nurse. Amen. We're so proud of her. Lift up your children. Give them encouraging words. My parents never told me I was dumb or stupid or ignorant. They told me, Jimmy, you can do anything you set your mind and your heart to do. Amen. And because of them, I am what I am today. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to congratulate baby girl for this great accomplishment. And it's going to be all right. God bless you. Uh, this is the mother of uh, baby girl coming up. This is senior girl. Amen. This is Sonia. <laughs> and she's going to come and lift up a special announcement. Amen. Her brother Yanders will come and talk to us about the windows. All right, thank you, Pastor. Uh, so the first announcement I want to talk about is Women's Day weekend. Is it on? Women's Day weekend coming up next weekend on Saturday. We are going to kick off our theme of Stay in the Fight with our exercise program i said that it was kickboxing last week but it is not kickboxing <laughs> so you don't have to worry um, we are going to be doing some healthy exercising and healthy snacking so please go to the saint james website you'll see a box when you um, log right in where you can register it is twenty dollars for each lady um, to register please come out and we will have a good time for that and then on sunday we will, um, as Bianca announced, have our Women's Day worship encounter. We are excited um, to see you in your beautiful pastel colors. And men, you're welcome to wear pastel shirts if you'd like, pastel ties, handkerchief, whatever you would love to do to support the ladies. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, my second announcement is for our 2023 Unsung Hero Banquet that occurs on June 17th. Um, at 11 a.m., it is virtual again this year, and our very own Miss Jan Ship is our 2023 Unsung Hero. And so as we always do as a wonderful church, every ministry always supports with an ad and tickets. We, um, you just need to let me know what size ads you're going to do, and I will create all the ads as I've done in the past, and tickets are on sale as well, so you can come out and support Miss Jan. Amen. So um, we appreciate you in advance for all that you do to support St. James. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, St. James. Good morning. Good morning. I'm bringing an uh, update on uh, the window campaign to repair the stained glass that's being sponsored by the trustee, uh -huh. trustees. Uh -huh. Now, we haven't had an update in a couple of weeks, but we are past the halfway point now. Yeah. We're 12,791. <laughs> On the way to um, 13,000, I know that there are a lot of obligations, like Women's Day, and you know it's always something. Yes, right. So just uh, keep the campaign in mind and do the, the best that you can. And thank you for your support. Thank the church, say amen. This coming Tuesday, is what? Election. election day. Every Christian, every child of God, every born again believer votes. I got my voting tile out today. I am a vessel and I vote. I got this several years ago at a meeting of pastors from across the country where all of us agreed to push and support voting of our people on election days. I cast my mail-in ballot and I got my email back saying we've received it. I am a vessel and I vote. Any Christian who does not vote is not a child of God. Too many of our foreparents lived, bled, and died for us to have the right to go to the polls. And I'm not going to let my mother and my father and grandparents down. I'm going to do my civic duty, cast my ballot, and if the people get elected that I did not vote for, I'm going to pray for them that God will intervene. And God will work out what we need in our lives. It's coming Tuesday's election day. Every St. James member votes. And if you don't, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> Amen. I want to say this morning a very happy birthday to the following persons. Deaconess Zerna Benton on May, May 2nd. Amen. Happy birthday. St. Ray Casson on May 3rd. Kaylin Ford, we're praying for you, Kaylin, on May 3rd. Dwayne Turner Sr., May 3rd. Andrew Bryant, May 5th. Joseph Mitchell, May 7th. Mary Woods, May 8th. Dr. Lisa Isaac, May 9th. Amen. <laughs> Mother Eunice Ellett, May 12th. Layla Spearman, her birthday is today. And we say happy birthday to Layla. Amen. <laughs> Tiffany Matthews, May 16th. Cora Davis, 521. Moretta Brock, 522. Aaron Wilson, 524. Tamara Frazier, 525. Millicent Ellett, 526. Calvin, you got a birthday this month on the 26th? Man, you're getting old. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Dr. Joseph Carroll. Amen. 29th. Reverend Maureen Cross Bolden. The 29th. Dr. Lawrence Davis. The 29th. Y'all need to get together. Regina Lane. The 29th. Security. Harold Jackson. May 31st. And we say happy anniversary to Larry and Mary Barry on May 10th. And happy anniversary to Thad and Audrey Gilliard on May 29th. Amen. Do we miss anybody's birthday anniversary? We want to celebrate life. Every day you get up is a blessing. When people ask me, Rabbi, how you doing? I say, I woke up. I don't say nothing else. But really nothing else matters. Celebrate God on your day of life, on your day of marriage. Thank God for your many blessings. Look back over your life 
see what God has brought you through and kept you from. And you'll find a reason to say, thank you, Lord, whatever age you are on your day of life. And to those who are celebrating anniversaries, Larry, I remember we ran the streets. Amen. Here in Pittsburgh. Any woman will put up with you for all these many years is a blessing. So Mary, thank you. And we bless God for both of you. And to Thad and Audra, happy anniversary. We love you. We thank God for you. And we're blessed because of you being a part of our family. Now, let's sing happy birthday to you. Everybody sing happy, happy birthday to you. 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 You look good. You look fine. And I hope, and I hope you have a mighty good time. Happy birthday. of you and may you realize the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living that you might not faint nor get weary in well doing God bless you, amen I want to thank God for all the persons who helped and volunteered with our food truck uh, distribution uh, we didn't get as many people as we have been getting but that's alright the food truck comes every second and fourth Wednesday from four to seven and you can come and buy without money and without price just pick out what you want I've been saying eggs and milk. Well, they ain't had no eggs and milk since they say hello, but I'm praying for some eggs and some milk. I want you to come and enjoy. I thank all of those persons who are volunteering. If you'd like to volunteer, please see Sister Barbara Douglas. She'll take your information and let you know what you need to do. That's every second and fourth Wednesday from 4 to 7 out here in the parking lot on the Lincoln Avenue side. Amen. Young folk, we need your information. Second Sunday in June, be real quick. We want everybody's name so we can celebrate your promotion, celebrate your graduation, so call the office and give us that information. Amen. Today is what? Mother's Day. How many of us celebrate our mothers who are in glory? I was talking to Andrew this morning. He said, this is a strange day because yes, Nana's gone. I said, brother, Nana's in your heart. As long as mama's in your heart, grandmama's in your heart, mama's with you. So we celebrate our mothers that God has called home. How many still have our mothers? Raise your hands. Grandmothers, aunties. Let me let you on a little secret. Life is short. And you better love your mothers and grandmothers while you can. Hello? Because when they're gone, it ain't easy, is it, Brother Isaac? It ain't easy. So love them and cherish them. Happy Mother's Day, Reverend. God bless you. Amen. Now we're going to do something different today. We have a bucket of flowers. I'm going to ask these young folk, come on up and help them, Andrew and Richard. I want these young folk to give every lady a flower. Because I don't want you saying Mother's Day passed and nobody gave me flowers. And to help the young people, I want the ushers to get two plates. I want y'all to follow these young people and give them a donation to the YPD. Amen. These are our young people, our children. And we love them and lift them up. You can get a white flower, a pink flower, or a red flower. Red is for mothers who are still here. White is for mothers who are deceased. Pink is just a, mother, a flower saying, Happy Mother's Day. Amen. All the ladies, raise your hand. Give a contribution to the YPD. Whatever it is will be appreciated. Write a check to St. James with the YPD. 
Go online, send something on Givelify, Spotify, not, Spot, not Spotify, what? Subsplash, I'm sorry. Givelify. Amen. Give to the YPD in support of their ministry, what they do. Some of our young people are going to Orlando, Florida this summer for, for the quadrennial. And we want to support them. This is just the beginning of our support. Amen. Give all the ladies a flower, all the mothers and aunties and special ladies who make a difference in our lives. Do we have enough flowers? If not, Marvin's going to give y'all some money. We tried to get enough flowers to everybody. Don't give Corey one. Corey, don't get a flower today. This is, this is Mother's Day. Give a donation to the YPD, whatever you can. All the ladies should have a flower. Anybody not have a flower? All right, we got one coming in. She needs a flower. And we're giving donations to the YPD. I'm so proud of these young people who come to church, work in the church, and don't mind praying and reading scripture and celebrating God. This is a special offering for the YPD. All the ladies have flowers. All right. Drew, Richard, come help him put the flowers back in the pot. Thank you, young folk. I wish I could take all the ladies out to dinner. <laughs> but they closed the smorgasbord, amen. <laughs> There's just a little something to say, we love you. We thank God for you. All right, thank you for your donations, your support, monetary support. Just put that on the side, there's some more. And if you want to give later on the service, you can. Thank you. God love you. All right, Sister Sylvia, y'all. Count that up after church. Let me know how much you got, amen, so we can report. Thank you so much. Now, young folk, I want you to stand up, all the young people, 35 and under. I can say, you in church now, don't you tell no story, amen. <laughs> I want you to blow kisses to all, all these mothers and ladies who are special. Like, ready on three. One, two, three. And say, we love you. And say, we love you. And say, we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of Brother Nate who's up here today. Mama, he said, I'll pray next time. I said, okay. Amen. No pressure. I want you to feel comfortable serving the Lord. And we thank God for these, our young people. Amen. Church school conventions coming up. It'll be June 9th and 10th. On the 9th, we'll be at Greater Morris Chapel, Amy Church in Farrell, Pennsylvania. Well, I passed it for 10 years sharing that day in classes and sharing in seminars. And on the 10th, we're going to Kennywood. I'm taking names and sizes for t-shirts today. See Andrew right after church. We'll get your size and so forth. And we're going to go to Kennywood and we're going to have some fun. I want all these young folk to go. Now, some of them are going to be away, but that's all right. I want all my young folk to go. Amen. And we thank God for our young people. Preaching time. God said, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach lest they be sent? 
But I woke up early this morning with a word on my heart. I want you to pray for me that God transforms my word into God's word. Amen. Pray for the choirs they come to lift up a song before we share the word. And then like the old mother of the church would say on Sunday morning while the preacher was preaching, what would they say? Help them, Lord. Amen. Amen. Just say that and God's name will be praised. Come on, quiet.
because you are good. Not only are you good, but you are faithful. Not only are you faithful, God, but you're an on-time God. Yes, you are. So we come today thankful. We come today blessed. But God, somebody is dealing with an issue. Somebody is facing a problem. Somebody feels alone and deserted. Somebody is thinking about their mother that you called home years ago. Whatever's on our minds, our hearts, our spirits, speak a word, God, that we might realize the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Speak to me, speak through me, speak in spite of me. In Jesus' name, I pray. And the people of God said, Amen. In the book of 1 John, the third chapter, 1 John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 3, we find these words, and I'm reading from the Message Bible translation. 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We are called the children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are. Children of God. And that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him and in seeing him become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming, stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. I want to look at that second verse that says, but friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? And I want to talk about today for a few moments, bearing family traits, bearing family traits. One of the greatest compliments I've ever received was when somebody said to me, you're just like your mother. <laughs> what we are and who we are is directly a result of who our parents and families were. Our personalities, our personal character, is a direct result of our family, our fathers, and our mothers. Family traits are simply those actions that reflect what we've seen and what we've observed in our mothers and fathers, uncles, aunts, and family. If you have a quick temper, Huh. Somebody will say, you act just like your mama. Hello? If you lose your mind over simple things, someone will say, you act just like your daddy. We are what we are because of those who raised us, prayed for us, and showed us who God is. What I'm saying this morning is that how we act, how we cover ourselves, how we live is in direct correlation of how we were raised. I know you don't like the word raised, but our parents raised us. Somebody said you raised cattle, you raised sheep, not children. No, my mother raised me. When I was wrong, she chastised me. When I was getting in trouble, she scolded me. When I was doing things I had no business doing, she would grab me by my cheek. You know that mama pinch, only mamas can pinch like that. It would hurt like the dickens and make me do right. I am today who I am and what I am because of my mother. I'm saying to you today, you act just like your parents. Hello? I knew many of your mothers and fathers. And in seeing you, I look at you and say, wow. That's old man Barry, amen. Wow, amen. I look at you and I see a reflection because your parents raised you and especially your mother. 
She was the real anchor of the family. Hello, not the father. Amen. Not the boyfriend, but the woman was the anchor of the relationship. And because her anchor was anchored in Jesus, she showed us a side of life that now we reflect. In the scripture today, John is saying, your spiritual family has the same effect on you as your physical family. If your physical family does not worship God, then you'll grow up not worshiping God. If your physical family does not believe in prayer, then you'll end up not believing in prayer. See, I learned how to pray watching my mom and my daddy on their knees in the bedroom late in the midnight hours having a little talk with Jesus. I learned how to pray watching them worship God, bow their heads, close their eyes, and have a little talk with Jesus. I saw them in public opening their mouths and saying words of prayer, of, of love and joy because of what Jesus is doing in their life. I learned how to pray watching my physical family. And then I learned how to pray and believe in my prayers, observing my spiritual family. See, it was more than just words spoken from human lips. It was words mixed up with power that only comes from Jesus. And the strange thing that rubbed off on me and my family traits is that I saw their prayers being answered. Hello? It wasn't just a midnight talk, a reflection. It was a time when they asked God for certain things and certain blessings, and I saw the blessings come. I am a believer in God today because I heard my mother and father pray, and then I found out if you have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your struggles, he will hear your faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. That's a family trait. John is saying, you have a family trait in you. And when your family was a God-fearing, God-loving, praying and worshiping family, then you found yourself growing up and praying and worshiping the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? It's a family trait. You didn't just get here overnight because one day you thought about going to church. No, your family laid a foundation, especially your mother's and showed you how to get through life and be all right. John tells us first who we are. One of the struggles I've had in my life, because I'm adopted, finding out who my real mother and father were. It's not easy growing up not knowing where you come from. Now, I was adopted by two loving persons and I thank God for them. But it hurt me that I couldn't dig into my roots and find out my bloodline and what I inherit from them. But you know, as I was adopted, and as I learned over the years, it doesn't matter who physically birthed you. What matters is who took the time out to love you and to lift you and to show you how to live in life. Took some time, but after a while, I found out who I was. I wasn't Mary's baby. That was my mother's name, my birth mother. I was Josephine and J.G. Harris's son. And I wasn't just Josephine and J.G. Harris's son. I was a child of God. John tells us who we are. You are children of God. You are the ones that God created, the ones that God loved, the ones that God uh, gave his life for. You are the ones who really made the difference in what God did and what God is doing in life. You are the ones that God called from the miry clay and lifted you to a rock to stay. You are the ones that God brought from sin into salvation, from darkness into light, from sadness into joy. You, 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 you are the children. You got to know who you are. You're not just anybody. You're somebody who's been blessed, somebody who's been lifted, somebody who's been touched by God and when you realize who you are you, you, can, you have no fear in saying thank you Lord hallelujah and glory John first says and reminds us who we are and when you understand your family traits in who you are it ain't hard to go to church it ain't hard to worship the Lord 
It ain't hard to usher and sing and pray and preach in the house of God. John, first of all, says, you are the children of God. Then John, secondly, says what we shall become. Life is funny. As you grow, you see things and realize things that you didn't realize and see when you were young. Hello? Life becomes different from when you sit up here as the YPD and when you sit out there as the elders of the church. Life shows us what we should be about and how we should be growing. You should not be the same as you were 20 years ago. Hello? You should not be the same as you were when you first came in the church. You should be different now. Some growth should have taken place. When I was a child, Bible says, I thought as a child. I acted like a child. But when I matured, I grew up and I left those childish things alone. I don't understand why jealousy is in the church. I don't understand why envy is in the church. You get upset because somebody else got a new job, got a new car, found a husband or wife. Why are you upset? You ought to be thanking God for what you have and how far God has brought you. See, I ain't got time to look at your stuff and compare my stuff to I don't have time to have a pity party about what I don't have. I don't have time. See, when I was young, that stuff bothered me. But as I grew, I came to count my blessings and name them. I'm not the same as I was when I was a teenager. I realized God bless you for having what you have, but God bless me also for having what I have. My parents gave me traits that allowed me to see how far God has brought me. Look where God has brought me from. I'm not the same. I have become what God is calling me to be. I don't even worship the same. I used to be scared to holler when I preach. I laugh at Drew and them sometimes up here like they're lecturing in a class. Well, don't worry. After some years of getting beat up in the pulpit, they'll develop a hoop, amen. They'll show a holler, hello somebody, amen. You understand what I'm saying? I've become something. And John says, this thing called faith and walking in Christ, it ain't over yet. And you don't understand how far God is going to take you. He tells us first, you're a child of God. Your mama said you belong to God. Your mama brought you up here to be baptized. Amen. Gave you to the church and gave you to God. Your mama showed you you're a child of God. And now you're growing and you're becoming and you're you're moving and maturing because God ain't finished with you yet. I ain't the same as I was yesterday. I'm different now. I pray different. I preach different. I sing different. I feel different. Hello, somebody. John says it's going to be something else when you become what God has called you to become. And then lastly, John says what we should reflect. I never understood how my mother held her peace and didn't get upset at some folk. I didn't understand how my father could sit in a trustee board meeting while trustees banged on the table and cursed him out. I said to my father one time, Daddy, you shouldn't take that mess. Slap them upside their head. They don't don't know who they're dealing with. Daddy looked at me. Mama looked at me. Mama said, God can whip them a whole lot better than you can. What you reflect should show Jesus and God in your life. I've learned, I ain't perfect, but I've learned, even though I turn red, I've learned to hold my peace and let the Lord 
fight my battle because of a family trait. My family taught me how to stand there and be still and know that he is God. My family showed me how to hold it on my heart, pray about it, and let go and let God deal with it. I learned how to live. Yeah, because of my mother and my father. And I reflect that. I look like my mother. She was light skin, good hair. <laughs> I'm talking about Josephine, the one that raised me. I, I used to always get tickled because when my daddy would go places, I'd be with him. He said, that's my son, look just like me. Now he was black as coal, hello somebody. <laughs> How in the world I look like him? I didn't understand what he's talking about then. But I understand now. It has nothing to do with your complexion. The waviness of your hair has to do with your actions and how you show the love of Jesus in your life on a daily basis. John says, you need to know who you are. You need to realize where God is trying to take you. And on the way, you need to reflect some God in you. I heard a choir sing a song one time. I got Jesus on the outside, working on the inside. And the chorus would say, I got Jesus all over me. We need some Jesus. We need to show folk rather than tell folk the love of God in their lives. We need to be examples of what God can do when the world says no, Jesus says yes. We need to be the ones who show people that it pays to serve Jesus every day of your life. We need to be the ones who should reflect a godliness that will stop people in their tracks and help them to see the Lord in their own lives. We need to help folk come to Jesus by seeing Jesus and not just by preaching Jesus. We need to go somewhere and show somebody that he lives and he prays for us and he holds the power of the you got to reflect people got to see that's between me and Lamaya people got to see some Jesus in you like you saw some Jesus in your mothers in your fathers and in your family I'm here because of family traits they didn't ask me to go to church. They told me I was going to church. They didn't ask me, are you getting up today? They said, get out that bed. It's time to go to school, time to go to work, time to go to church. I was raised by God-loving, God-fearing family. And because of family traits, I didn't want to be a preacher. That's the last thing I wanted to be. I saw how they treated my daddy. I saw what they did in church. And I said in my mind, I want to be an engineer, architect. I said, shoot, I work in Kaufman's, amen, rather than work in the church. But here I am. Because I got it from my mama. Last thing she told me, before she closed her eyes, I had a good job, amen. But she told me, you'll never be happy and satisfied till you accept the calling of God in your life. Preachers all have a calling story. They have a story where God broke through the walls, made the lights shimmer and shine, Richard, go preach. <laughs> you got calling stories that say how God called them. Well, my calling story on this Mother's Day is that God called me, but my mother delivered the mail. The sky did not break open. The sun did not refuse to shine. But I heard a voice say, Jimmy, if you want to be blessed and be happy, accept your calling in the Lord. Amen. My call story don't have bells ringing, choirs singing. You know all that glamour people want to talk, you know preachers. My call story is in on a sick bed about to die after fussing all Saturday night 
because I stayed out too early in the morning. My mother said, you're not going to be happy and blessed until you accept God calling in your life. And I left that bedroom. Six months later, I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Pick up that cross and follow me. I got it from my mama. I got my faith from my mama. I got my joy from my mama. I got my steadfastness from my mama. I got the coolness of my temper from my mama. I got it from mama. And because mama took me in, prayed for me, blessed me, held me, encouraged me, disciplined me, I'm where I am today. And I've come to remind you, you are who you are because of who your parents were and your grandparents were. And you ought to still be praising God. One of the, one of the, one of the, one of the major problems with this culture, this society, is mothers stop going to church. They'd rather go to the club. I saw a video the other day where they were singing twerk in church. And, uh, they had some ladies, young ladies, not no old ladies. Y'all the old they would have broke their leg trying to do that. They had some ladies up in front. I said, what kind of worship is that? I don't twerk for God. I celebrate God. Not in the shaking of my instruments, but in the raising of my hands in glory. Mothers need to find Jesus. If mothers find the Lord, children will find the Lord. If children find the Lord, they'll grow up and raise their children to the Lord. But the Bible says there's coming a time when people won't listen to sound doctrine. They'll follow every woman's fancy, whatever tickles their ears. They'll go with everything that sounds good. But everything that sounds good, amen, ain't necessarily good for you. They'll follow stuff that really doesn't matter and doesn't last. You wonder why you get sad when the party's over? It's because they turned off the music. You wonder why you get upset when everybody leaves and you're there by yourself? Because you were trying to get joy from people. I don't have to be with nobody. I could be by myself and think about the goodness of Jesus in my life and get happy in my soul, wherever I am, in my car, at my house, at the church, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it doesn't matter. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I see my mama shouting, I see my grandparents shouting, and because they taught me where my blessings come from, I find myself shouting, I shout y'all, I know I'm hearing me, well, I'm hearing me with a Pentecostal Baptist, amen, Episcopal Papalian flavor. You don't know what I'm going to do because God's been good. He don't preach like no enemy preacher. God's been good. Why he's singing all the time? God's been good. Why he always shouting and screaming? Because God's been good. This is how I talk. This is how I praise. How I worship. Because God's been good because of my family traits. Think about it. Think about who taught you about the Lord. Think about who made you go to Sunday school. I hate it. Sister Skates, I hate, I, I hate it. Old man, I, Larry, I hate it. Going from class to class to class. To, I get a pen every year. I hate it going to Sunday school. That's where I got my theological training from people who knew what they were talking about. They weren't just reading a book. They would put it into words that should be understood and you could grow with. I hate it, but look what it's done for me. And now you can't get young folk to come to church school no matter what. I have mean, a lot of young folk going to Kennywood, but I ain't gonna have too many folk going to the church school convention. That's all right. If I keep them around the fire long enough, they'll get hot. Hello? Amen. Today is Mother's Day. Look what your mother went through, but see how she came out. <laughs> Look how your mothers had to scrub floors 
and work in back kitchens and bus tables. But look how God brought him out. Look how my mother was a jitney driver. She had a brown Rambler station wagon and they called her Jitney Joe. But on Christmas and the tr presence around the tree, I thank God for the Jitney and I thank God for Joe. Hello, somebody. Look how God blessed your parents and then realize how God can bless you too. The seed's been planted. Now it's up to you to let it go and let it grow for the Lord. Heard a song one day, it said, I found my Jesus way out on a hill. I found my Jesus walking down this aisle in St. James at 12 years old. When I came up, I got up here and said, what am I doing up here? I had tears in my eyes. Why am I crying? Did I walk? Did I run? I forgot how I got from there to here. Isn't that how we do in life? We forget how God takes us from problems to solutions and from dilemmas to deliverance and from trouble to triumphant living. Well, this is the time when I announce you, encourage you, don't forget, think about your blessings. Name them and see what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. I'm not going to old school. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Come on and stand. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. You are to count your many blessings. See what God has God blessed you. Raise your hand. Has God taken care of you? Raise your hand. Has God made a way for you when your boys and your posse said it's impossible? Raise your hand. Have you ever got a paycheck and looked at it? And then looked at your bills and didn't know what to do, but somehow your little check met your bills and everything. Hello? Have you ever been sick on your bed of affliction and nobody came to visit you or stopped by to see about you, but somebody stood by your side, bedside, and helped you get back up on your feet? That's who I'm talking to today. People who were taught to do right and go to church and be a part of the family of God. When they got older, they decided not to. You know, when I was young, I said, I ain't never going to church when I get grown. When I was a teenager, I said, I, I, I ain't going. Hey Amen. I could fight on my job. I could, you know, I ain't, I ain't going there. Them folk ain't up to no good. That's what I said. But here I am, 69 years old. I've been running for Jesus ever since I was 17. Hello, I'm talking to you. I know what you said you wasn't going to do, but I hear that song that said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. I want you to come today online, put it in the chat, go in Messenger, we'll respond to you. If you're in the presence of the self, of those who are here in person, walk down the aisle, give your life to the Lord. This is your day of salvation. What better day to join church and give your life to God than Mother's Day? Your mothers will smile down on you. Your mothers will smile at you over dinner if you pay the bill. Hello, somebody. Your mothers will celebrate you and give joy to God because of your coming today. Won't you come because you got family traits of walking with God. Oh, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Come on, count your many blessings. See what God has done. Ladies, ladies, count your la ladies. 
Y'all don't know this song? Okay, fellas, fellas, count your blessings. I'm laughing because some of the brothers are like, I don't care how it comes out as long as it's from the heart. Count your blessings. Come on. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want to show y'all something today. Pumas. Is that what they are? Them Jordans. You pay a lot. Your mama paid a lot of money for them shoes. Nikes. Don't hide them. Swiss. Okay. But your mom, no one your mama broke. You got Jordan, he got Jordan. What you call, no, not Clark, what you call them? Okay. I got on spirits. I mean, is that what, is that what it is? No, no. Skechers. I don't even know the name of them, hello? I'm saying this to show you something. When I was young, I could wear gaiters, floor shimes, you know, you know, all those stylish men's shoes. But now, my feet hurt. And my back hurt. And I can't make it with both hurting. So I found me some, what you call them? Sketches, yeah. And Larry's like walking on clouds. Now some old folk told me, Rem, you need to wear some dress shoes. I said, Negro, I'm gonna wear what's safe on my feet without your amen. <laughs> See, as you get older, you change. Nice shoes, Richard. Keep on living. Sketches on the way, amen. <laughs> I love you, God loves you. You ought to have fun, enjoy every day. Because you never know. You never know. I celebrate Josephine Mary Harris, but also celebrate my birth mother, Mary Allen. I know that's my birth mother, but I don't know who my birth father is. But I do know who my spiritual father is. And his name is Jesus. So we celebrate Mother's Day. I pray the best blessings on every lady who loves children, whether you birth them or not, but you think it's your responsibility to help raise them. Along with Josephine with Irv E. from Bethel. Y'all remember Irv E.? And Mamie, they were sisters over at Bethel. Boy, they could make the best pig feet and chitlins there were. I know y'all don't eat that stuff no more because y'all got sophisticated, but that's all right. I grew up on pork, and uh, hello, yeah. Ladies are put in your life to help nurture you. I remember Rachel Washington. You remember Aunt Auntie Ray from Bethel? She was the YPD uh, director for the conference. And one day, my mother and father went to Philadelphia for the general conference. They left on Sunday afternoon. Soon as they turned the corner, I got on the phone. Did I call you, Charlotte? You sure? Donna, did I call you? Jackie? Now I called some of y'all, no, I'm like, hey, amen. I said, come on over to the house. We're gonna have a party. You know how kids do when mom and dad gone? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. And I thought everything was cool. I turned the, the music up. I went upstairs in the stash. 
and we were in there partying. You sure you were in there, Charlotte? And then the doorbell rang. I thought it was somebody else coming to the party. I thought it was some fine chick going, hey, hello, somebody. And when I opened the door, it was Auntie Ray with that little church hat on. She caught the bus from up there Center Avenue all the way down here to Lincoln Avenue. And when she walked in that door, she was so angry. She was only about this tall. She messed up everybody. Called my mom that said, Give me up here partying. Y'all out there, don't worry, I got it till you get back. Amen. She put me on punishment, took my car keys. I mean, I was. But thank God for the ladies God put in my life to serve as mothering figures to help me grow and become a man and a man in God. Ladies, we love you and thank you. In the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good picture of your mom on Facebook this morning, I saw it. Thank you. I'm seeing the faces of those gone before. Sister Agnes. Mean as a <laughs> stern. And when Agnes walked in the room, you straightened up. Because you didn't know what she was going to do. Brother Campbell, so many. Ladies, have a good day. But fellas and young folk, don't stop loving your mother because Mother's Day is over. Every day God gives you with mama is a blessing. And even when mama is called home, it's still a blessing. So love your mothers. Support your mothers. Don't get smart with your mothers. Don't sash your mothers. Mama taught me don't never go in a woman's purse. And to this day, go get my purse, Jimmy. Go look at my purse. No, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to bring it to where you are. Here's your purse. Because I got family traits. God bless you. Just having fun celebrating mothers. Thank God for these young people. I want Bianca to come and give us a final announcement on giving. And I want y'all to keep Monica lifted up in prayer. She was out last week, went the afternoon to the worship. But she didn't do too, too well. So she's still resting and recuperating. But we pray for her. Richard's going to leave and go home this week. Amen. And be with his family, go to annual conference. Richard, be safe. Come back soon. I see you at the end of June at general board meeting. Amen. But y'all keep Richard lift up in prayer. That's one of your sons. You could always claim Richard Norris III as your son, just like you claim Jimmy Harris. God bless you. Come on, come on, Bianca. And Bianca drove to church this morning on the parkway. Thank you. Just a, one last quick reminder that you can give using the gold plates in the sanctuary. You can mail your offering and you can give on Givelify and the St. James app. Thank you. Hey Amen. let's give all these young people a hand. And uh, I just want to shake your hand. It takes a lot of courage to sit up here takes even more courage to go and kneel at that bench and talk with God. But you're on your way. The first step is getting up here. Amen. And I praise God for you. Give him a hand, give him a hand, give him a hand. <laughs> Gigi always does good. Gigi's my girl. She says, Pastor. And I just love her for it. I praise God. Young folk, don't forget, we need your information for Children's Recognition Day, second Sunday in June. We also need to know if you're going to Kennywood with us. I got a couple young people going to the church convention on that Friday, but I need your size, church, church size, and uh, if you're going to go to Kennywood so we can turn that in this week. Hey man, I'm gonna ride me some roller coasters. Yes, I am. I get a shot on the six in my back. And I told the doctor, hit it right, because I'm going to be on that roller coaster on that Saturday. Amen. Have fun. Yeah, I'm crazy. But I get it from my mama. 
And God bless Josephine Mary Henderson Harris. Had rheumatic fever when she was a teenager. She died when she was 52. But she lived long enough to help Jimmy find Jesus. That's all that matters. It's all said and done now, Howie. Ken, you're getting ready to play your final run on the drums for today. Choir is going to help me sing. And you're going to stand up and sing in thanksgiving for your mother by singing, let the church say, Amen. Ready? Let the church. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Good job, good job. Let the church. Good job, good job, good job, good job. God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the young people. Thank you for the mothers. Thank you for the families who took time out to share and give thanksgiving for their parents. Thank you, God, for all those who came to worship you. And dear God, as we leave this sanctuary, please, God, don't take your presence from us. So walk with us. Stand by our side. Lift us when we are down. Strengthen us when we are weak. And bless us when we stand in the need of a blessing. God, we don't know your might. But we know your will. So God, we stand firm on our faith and we take that first step in realizing where our blessings come from. Thank you for our parents who taught us how to praise you and how to worship you and how to take time out for you and make you first in our lives. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, so we can be in the Holy Spirit, rest, Lord, abide with you and all this day and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Church, say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And happy Mother's Day. Let's have a blessing. Pastor Harris here, thanking you for joining us in worship today. You've been a blessing to us. It's our prayer that we've been a blessing to you. I know that God's going to work miracles in our lives. We just have to pray for one another. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. Watch God change things. God bless you.